You are listening to the Agree to Disagree program on the new American Media.com. Hey everybody, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us. This is now our transitional moment where we say thank you for listening to Agree to Disagree. Welcome to the program. I want to thank Jackie, that sports babe, Taylor, for joining us in the last segment. Yes, we ran a little late, but yeah, sometimes you do that. But that's okay. Half of our sports show, we talked about politics and current events, so I'm just going to roll with it. Well, I'll tell you what, we are going to connect right now with a gentleman named Blake. Blake Wally from Nevada. That's the game plan. Hello, Blake. Hey, Jeff. Ryan, how you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I can, I can, I can almost hear you. Are you listening on your computer, or you, do you have another way to plug in direct to your computer? Because if you're listening on playback, you're probably on the delay. But if you're locked in with Skype right away, then it might be a little complicated. Yeah, that's what I would say. I'm, uh, I don't exactly, I'm not that technical, so I can always use another phone. <laughs> There's definitely a delay between uh, gotcha. headphones and everything. Okay, Blake... All right, Blake, uh, I need you to shoot me the number you want us to call you back on, and we'll call you right now. Um, why don't you text us the number you want us to call through Skype? All right, yeah. And then we'll call you right now, okay? Thanks. Okay. All right, that's Blake Wally. We're going to bring Blake back in. But Oh, wait, there he is. There he is. Okay. So what we could do, actually, let's see how this goes. He is joining us now. I don't think we've saved... We haven't spoken with Blake before, so this is going to be our first phone call. We have a lot of regular guests that tend to come back on the program, tend to join us on a regular basis. We have cats from the Oath Keepers. We have different sports fans that come on to talk about current events as it relates. But we have not saved... We have not saved Blake into our call logs yet, but he will right now. Yo, Brian. Blake, how are you? Good, sir. You're live on the air. Excellent. Yeah, sorry about that. I'll have to figure that out. I'm not a big Skype uh, user. Well, let me tell you, we're not huge Skype fans either, except that we we used to have a completely different setup here at the radio show. We used to have a different producer, engineer team, um, and different gear where, where we would route things a different way. But now we like to use Skype as an alternate line and then use the landline over here to go a different way. But whatever. The point isn't how we connect. The point is that we have connected. We're talking with Blake Wally. You go by a nickname. You recently attended an interesting event, and there's a reason I brought you on the show. So if you want to just kind of introduce yourself, uh, talk about your radio show for a second, and then why we contacted you. Just give us the bullet points, then we'll start picking it apart and go through the details. All right, I am uh, Blake Wally, or the uh, the eccentric. That's, uh, I guess I could say it's my nickname of sorts. I'm also a uh, radio host and a uh, writer, but I was in uh, Reno uh, the other week uh, with the uh, Republican State Convention, and I uh, caught a little bit of a surprise. I brought with my media equipment with me, what I had, and uh, caught some uh, shenanigans and some dirty tricks leaked by the uh, Romney campaign against uh, the Ron Paul. So that was uh, pretty exciting stuff. Now, we found this, and, and this is why we, we instantly reached out to you and said, thank you, Blake, and, and I, I think we said something to the effect of, you, all capital Y-O-U, you are the new all capital new. You are the new American media, because we just don't oh, trust. You. We don't trust the, the the corporate interests anymore. I mean, look, I I'm gonna start selling ads one day, and you probably will too. And we all want to turn a buck and pitch a product as long as it's not cancer filled and complete garbage. You know, I, I I totally get it. That's fine. But when the news we're supposed to consume is just propaganda with ulterior motives. We can't trust it anymore, and that's why we start the New American Media. That's why you get a radio show and we get a radio show. So you are there. This story wouldn't have been reported had you not caught it. So, number one, tell people where they can find this story, where they can go on YouTube. Either you have it on YouTube or on another site, but tell them where they can find it if they want to check it out. What's it titled, or how do they find it? 
Um, as far as the YouTube title goes, I believe it, it, if you put in like Dirty Tricks, uh, Nevada Convention, some of those keywords, it should pop up right away. Dirty uh, Tricks, was, Nevada Convention. Dirty Tricks, Nevada Convention. Okay. Or even just Dirty Tricks, Nevada, it'll probably show up towards the top. Although that might be, be a website, apparent. that might be a website for something by the Bunny Ranch. You never know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But uh, as far as it's published, I know it was, it was definitely on Infowars, uh, Prison Planet, and the Activist Post. So I want to thank them because I sent them the video uh, before I went to bed, and I didn't really think that much of it, or even know if they were going to publish it or not. But both uh, both uh, the Activist Post writers—I uh, don't know if it was Michael Edwards or not, or Steve Watson—but they both uh, penned up their own articles to go along with it. So I want to thank them for that too. It was a pretty cool experience. I would say so. Sounds pretty cool. So, yeah. so, so you're at this event, and this is what? This is the Nevada State. Set up the scene for us. All right. So uh, I've been involved in the old delegate process for uh, as a as a Ron Paul supporter, and I also do the like the media as well. So I thought I would kind of go up to uh, Reno as the delegate. It was a kind of an exciting thing, the state convention. So. Uh, I just checked that out, and I, I went both as a delegate and as a member of the media, brought my camera along, and uh, ended up catching some stuff. Uh, there was uh, basically there was just an announcement just sitting in this huge room. Uh, it was about a 14-hour meeting that we had. That's horrible, yeah, by the way. <laughs> that is just excruciatingly painful. 14 hours of politics. Oh, we have it a hard was, time doing a, a, an hour without our, our skulls melting out of our ears. That's harsh. <laughs> no, I know, but it was, uh, it was hopefully only once every four years. Love was, the Constitution. Uh, it was all worth it. Yeah, you got it, it, yeah. small price to pay. They walked around with, with without shoes at Valley Forge in the middle of the snow on bloody stumps for seven years. We can go to a 14-hour annoying convention, but please continue. <laughs> right. Uh, so, um, basically, I don't know how to explain exactly how these processes work. but Do the best uh, you can, because I'm unfamiliar myself. Do the best you can. Yeah, and I'm going to be terrible at explaining this, but what they go over all these bylaws, and it's a lot of meeting stuff, and uh, going over different rules, and getting everybody on the same page, but, uh, and there's like your chairman, and some of your staff that are up in the, at the, uh, in the middle, of course, making all the announcements, but then uh, the general public can get up and ask questions, and stuff like that, and uh, so this girl uh, gets up there, her name is Rachel, and she's got two of these like uh ballot slates and what is uh, a ballot slate then I i've seen the video so i kind of know but explain so she's holding two very similar looking ballot slates you say right so it, it, it's it is this is where it gets tricky because it's always like this whole delegate process in the caucus states so like the general public doesn't really necessarily vote for i, I can't like specifically go and vote for ron paul but what I what you do is you vote for the, the delegates, delegates who delegates will too. then tell you I vote I will cast my delegate vote for this person if you select me as the delegate right right in I'll Nevada's vote for the vote state, yeah okay okay so there's Nevada's a smaller state so there's 25 delegates that Nevada has and then those delegates go to Tampa and help vote for the uh, the next Republican uh, nominee between Romney and Ron Paul. Right. So uh, what the, uh, the what the campaign does to make it easy, I mean, I don't know exactly every single delegate or have had a chance to meet him, so I, I, I trust the campaign to, uh, to, to handpick some of the people that they trust to, uh, that, are, that are their people that are going to be voting the way we want them to be voted. And so they hand out a slate to tell you who they... Who, who are the approved candidates that they vote for or that, that they suggest that people vote let, for? Let me tell you, Blake, let me, let me jump in there, with, and we'll pick it up with the approved no set of candidates that they, that they vote for. What I was going to say, we, we'll push off the commercial break, whatever. I, I, they, I'm way past trying to plan today's show. We're just all over the oh, place, no and problem. I love it. But I was going to say, um, we're trying to get somebody else on the line right now. Um, his name's sure. Mark Clary. He's with Lions of Liberty. He, he's another person that embedded your video on the site. Um, and he gets the stuff out there, libertarian stance, and, and I think he 
he's on the list to be a California delegate. So he's really wrapped up in this. He's a really big Ron Paul supporter. So as far as all of the details, I like getting Mark Claire to ramble about this stuff because he's studied. He is a great writer, and he's taught me more about this delegate nonsense than I've ever expected. But you're teaching us a lot, too, because you're saying the people at the convention... Yeah, well, I mean, we're all learning this for the first time, perhaps. You know, maybe our dads didn't run for president like Mitt Romney did. <laughs> Remember that? You know, no, you don't. That was six fifty years ago, but he did. He really wanted it then, and he really wants it now. Um, so let's pick it up wherever you can. We're, we're trying to bring in Mark Claire on a dual line through the Skype line some way, but anyway, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, no please problem. please continue there, because you're talking about the, the the list of delegates who have said, I will support Ron Paul. That's where I stopped you. Yeah, so they hand these out. The, the Ron Paul campaign, they basically hand these uh, slates out so people know, uh, have an idea of the people that they want to be voting for when, the, uh, when, they, when they do the votes. So uh, as, as the dirty trick comes by, they had, uh, I guess there was more than one. There was a few people that worked for the Mitt Romney campaign wearing Ron Paul T-shirts, and they handed out their own ballot that said, to basically confuse the issue and to make it look like the Ron Paul ballot to basically uh, <laughs> to, to wreck the vote. So they, have it, they even got the right color and everything, so I don't know exactly how they pulled it off or how they found out uh, what the ballot would look like and what color it was going to be. Then they ran out, made a bunch of copies, and put a bunch of uh, different names on it. And uh, that was just there to confuse the, 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 the Ron Paul voters. So luckily uh, this Rachel girl came up to the podium or came up to the microphone and made the announcement. And after that, uh, one, of the, one of the guys was busted, and that's what we caught on video. So I, I, as soon as I heard that they had uh, busted one of these guys, I went down. I okay, wait, wait, let, let, let's pause right there. Let's pause before you start yeah. to run. Um, so, so this Rachel girl grabs the microphone, says, "Excuse me, excuse me," and you hear that that feedback from the mic. You hear, ee! you know, like yeah. like the classic, er, like the 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 record being ground to a halt. Uh, anyway, you know yeah. <laughs> it's like, hang yeah, on, no, hold. That actually, sounds better. Yeah, <laughs> hold on a minute. Now we have a problem. So she gets up there and, and she says, "Look, there's somebody out here that is fraudulently handing out. You know, these papers are are sham. They're a fraud. They're a scam. It's nonsense." So she just stopped the show. And and grab the mic pretty much is what happened because she was notified somebody is trying to say these people are going to vote for Ron Paul but this is a lie in a way I like your imagination if they ever make that into a movie that's I, that's, ex that's exactly how I'd like to then, see it then don't out. then don't yeah. then don't correct me on this I can see the right. Hollywood sign from my exactly office let how me just it played out were you there Brian I mean, that, was, that was amazing <laughs> I was only there because of your great All video right. because of your All great right. video no anyway so how did it exactly play out here with Rachel. Oh yeah, she made the announcement, um, and then I was went I went around and I talked to some people, and then I got the uh, the information that they had found they had grabbed one of these guys. So then I grabbed my camera and I ran downstairs, and luckily I got to see the rest of it uh, take place. That by that time they had the casino security was there. They had other people that uh, were, were uh, questioning him, and then he went to the holding room. So I'm not really sure what happened after that, but. Well, let, let's talk about that, too, for a second, because so so how did you know that this guy was one of the guys giving out the wrong things? So so Rachel goes up and says her piece and you're like, right. hey, there's a guy. Did people start looking and pointing and, and saying, hey, it's him, it's him? What, like, how did the, how did you identify the fake guy? How did you pick Waldo out of the crowd? I, I did not. I had heard about it and that I guess he went downstairs because we were on the second floor. OK. And so then that's when I uh, ran downstairs with my camera and to go see if I could find this or if I could find anybody being chased around or just get a follow-up on what was going on. So Nice. But uh, it all happened pretty quickly. But, yeah, he was just sitting right there, so the guy that was, that was busted on the video. Very nice. I'll tell you what, this, yeah. this is a nice time to bring in Mark Claire. We're going to go ahead and give him a, a call on Skype. Love his picture, by the way. More technical than me. <laughs> <laughs> Love the submarine noise, like I'm going to see the movie Battleship. Hey. Hello. Mark Clare with Lions of Liberty. This is Brian with the NewAmericanMedia.com. Can you hear me, sir? 
I can hear you so loud in my ears. I got to turn this down a little bit. Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> I don't think there's such a thing. I think my voice is just just like rock. Can- I don't know. It's just awesome. Um, anyway, can- Blake, awesome. Okay, Blake cool. would you say hello to Mark Clary? Hey, Mark. What's going on? I appreciate Blake, your what's uh, happening, man? article. Yeah. Living the dream. <laughs> yeah. Work on that video. I've been, I've been spreading it around. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let me uh, let me jump in here. Uh, Blake was obviously just the first thing I think we talked over it for just a second. He was just saying thanks for putting up that article and embedding the the story. So, Mark, take it from there. T- talk talk about uh, how you discovered this video and why you felt it was important to put in your piece. Where they can find your writing, who it is, you know, what you do, where they can find you. Just go for a few minutes. Talk for a little bit. That that whole thing. Yeah, yeah. I I found his video uh, because I'm a Ron Paul freak and I find every video that's true, ever true. been put on the internet so <laughs> that, that's how that happened um, there's pretty much nothing that gets by me but um, yeah I mean we need to get these things out there there's been so many instances of, of blatant fraud or I mean I, I guess a lot of it earlier was you know t- people you know fraud that people talked about or people suspected but this was something that was actually you, we can't even dispute it it's literally caught on tape and yeah, it's there yeah. for everybody so it's important to get this out there so we can kind of have a little bit you know everyone Oh, these Paul people are think everything's fraud and Paul's sweeping everything. And no, I don't think Paul Ron Paul is winning all these primaries necessarily or anything like that. But there is very clear fraud going on, on on multiple levels. So it's good to have it documented. So I think that's super important to get out there. So we we put that um, out on a recent blog post I did talking about um, some of the recent happenings in the Paul campaign, the, the rumors, the media line that he's dropped out, which is incorrect, uh, completely incorrect. And um, so I, I, you can find me at lionsofliberty.com. That's where that's been posted. And, um, yeah, we're just trying to do what you're doing, Brian and Blake, and just open up the conversation. We have our blog. We uh, try to make our radio appearances and get the word out and keep this conversation going. So we're all kind of on the same page here. No, let me tell, let you, me Mark, tell you, Mark, there's something, there's something that, that I don't know, I don't if, know there if there are other people that are aware, aware of, of, but we had mentioned that you were recently you named, named to one of the most, one of the most 100 influential libertarian websites. You want to tell Blake? We're actually and the not quite at 100 yet. I don't, want to, I don't want to brag too much. We're at, like, one. 22 but it's oh. a, it a list of uh that yeah it's um at capital free press um they have a list of the most viewed libertarian websites that we just very recently got on so we're currently ranked at 122 of like i think 142 that he's or, that well he's if if you... i hope to crack the top 100 very soon <laughs> that's that's the goal well I, my hunch is now that you put blake's video on your site you might easily crack the top 100 especially the since <laughs> it's been a week. Blake, I wanted to kind of pick up there now that we have Mark on the phone. And where we left it was Rachel gets – I think her name was Rachel uh, – gets up yeah. in front of the mic. And, and you, you liked my explanation of it where the, 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 the record screeches to a halt and then the microphone gives the feedback. Everybody goes silent. <laughs> Everyone yeah, goes right. silent. All the heads turn on one fixed moment in time um, and says, hey, it was him. And then you guys chase him with pitchforks down the hall, downstairs. And so let's, let's pick up from there where – you, you, you encounter this guy, and, and there's another guy with you. I don't know if you know who that guy is, but tell us what happens when you encounter this guy. You have your phone out, and you're saying, I'm the new American media. I don't trust you guys. I, I have to be the media because no one else is going to do it. I am the militia in my neighborhood if something bad is happening. I have to step up here. Tell us about what happens when you confront this guy and bring in these, these rent-a-cops or these police. Tell us about that scene because that seemed pretty interesting. Well, the guy was just kind of a, I just, I'm sure he's just a useful idiot and doesn't really know much about what's going on. And just a lot of the uh, the Romney zombies that are typical that uh, I, I saw a lot of. Um, I'm not really sh- <laughs> I, I don't really know. So can you repeat that one more time? I, I lost my uh, train of no, thought j- on No, just that one. Y- you're down there. You, you, you said you yeah. had to go downstairs to catch this guy. So now you catch him. Right. You pull out your phone. You've identified him. He's he's wearing a Ron Paul shirt that's maybe a size or two too small, and he's caught red-handed. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that. And and so now there's two rent-a-cops talking to him. Explain the scene, like like what what did you what did you feel like, and what what are you observing as as you realize Dude, I got to get this on tape? It, it's it's surreal and it's absurd to actually watch in real life, 
and then you get the adrenaline flowing yeah, on I top can imagine. of it. So that's not, it takes it out of my element, because usually I write or do radio, and I just got to sit back and chill and relax. And then when you actually, you, you get out in there in person, and then you, you, get, you start to feel the adrenaline flowing, and it's, it's crazy, and it's absurd, because it's, it, it's, hard, it's surreal to actually see. So it probably looks a lot different when you see it on a finished product on camera versus when you're actually there live, and it's like, is this really happening, and is this, what's going on? So I don't know how to describe it. No, I mean, I, I, think, I think you're right. We were talking with Jackie, that sports babe, Taylor, in the last segment. I don't know if you were able to catch it, but, uh, you know, kind of talk yeah, about how is. LeBron James changes when the playoffs come. You know, it's like he can be fun-loving and having a great time with his teammates, but when the lights start shining their brightest, he starts to crumble under the pressure. You know, and it's a, diff <laughs> it's, it's a different type of adrenaline when you're at an event. I've You know, Mark Clare is one of the best libertarian writers I know. And oh, come on now. <laughs> Okay, he's the best. Well, how many do you know personally, though? Am I the only one you know? You're so, the only no. one that I know. <laughs> well, you know Blake. <laughs> well, I, okay, okay, then you're okay. number two, Mark. No offense. All right, uh, fair enough. No, I'm just he kidding. Was on but first. <laughs> what's on second? No, I was saying that that Mark is fantastic at writing, but it's a totally different speed Appreciate when you go to an event. Mark came with me to a tea party rally in Pasadena. It was it happened to be Michelle Bachman. Um, Herman Cain went through there. Newt Gingrich went through there. I don't think Ron Paul did, but it's it's Mark. You want to talk about that? How it's different writing compared to going to an event. And you're holding a camera and you're trying to get an interview, and it's just it, it it's almost like you step out at least for me i don't want to put words in your mouth but for me it's almost like i step out of my body i go on autopilot based on the the skill set i've developed and things just happen and i have to watch the video to see what happened yeah yeah i, I mean i know what you mean i almost felt like i was in stealth kind of at the tea party event because i don't <laughs> know I, I guess a lot of my views are contrasting with a lot of the things that Miss Bachman was talking about and the other people that I was speaking to were talking about and um, what I might just rant about on my blog is not necessarily I'm not going to shoot off at them you know I, I actually do want to listen to what they're saying because my goal isn't to just scream at people to the top of my lungs although that happens from time to time <laughs> late at night usually at a CD bar but that's that's the side <laughs> point but um, you know that, that's not how you really win people over and so I do want to listen to what they're saying and you know yeah you do have to kind of step out of your own body out of your own crazy over-spirited soul and just kind of step back and listen to what they're saying and process it and realize that guess what five years ago I didn't think the way I do now on a lot of things ten years ago I really didn't and let's not go further back than that because it gets pretty scary but you know <laughs> everybody I think something we're seeing is people changing and people uh, we want people to start to come to our, our way and come to our views so in order to get Others to do that, we have to be as equally respectful to them as uh, you know, as as we want you know, as we want them to listen to us. So I, I think in that way, it's a different, a little bit different experience going in public and speaking to people than um, just me sitting on my computer just going off and just you know raving myself away. But, yeah, um, and, and you have the opportunity, an interesting experience. and you have the opportunity to edit yourself. You know, you can right. you can say, "Oh, that sentence was weird," or "Oh my gosh, did I really just write that?" Like that's totally not what I meant. Yeah. But if someone read this the wrong way, they could infer so that I'm trying to say something. That, let me erase that. When you're live radio or you're at an event and the lights are on, or it's the NBA Finals and you're shooting a technical, I mean, you don't get do-overs. You know, I, I had the opportunity to go on a game show. And it was crazy. Carlton from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was the host. And it's, <laughs> I won't get into all the details, but it was a trip. And all the lights are on. You have a studio audience, two sets of bleachers cheering like crazy. You're going to commercial breaks. You're kind of hot. It's like all these questions are being thrown at you. You got competitors. You're looking at Carlton. He's asking you questions <laughs> like he's like he's an authority on life. You know, I mean, it's it is surreal, but you gotta just kind of step away from it. I wanted I wanted to mention this because. Although I, I really wanted to get to the point that, that Mark writing compared to Mark being in an event is different than you, uh, Blake, doing a radio show or writing and being at an event where you got to become the media. You didn't ask for it, kind of, necessarily, but you had to. Yeah, I was I, looking for it, but yeah, I didn't know what to expect until it happened. At, at, well, that's, that's kind of what life is. I, one of the, the great quotes is, you know, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. Tell that to a Cleveland sports fan waiting for a championship. But I get the point. You know, right. you just show up and see how you're supposed to play it. But I wanted to see if anyone else has told you. I love, and I got to tell you this, Blake, I love the part of the video that you capture where the fake dude gets the fake phone call. 
Come on. <laughs> I mean, is that not great? Has anyone else pointed out how awesome it is that the fake dude wearing the fake Ron Paul shirt handing out the fake papers gets the fake phone call? Like, oh, excuse me, officers. I got to go run out the building this way. All right, is that yeah, funny to anyone else? About, yeah. I mean, that, that, <laughs> Mark, help me out here. That was my favorite part of it. Yeah, oh, excuse I was going to say, the, the T-shirt isn't fake. The T-shirt's the only real thing going on <laughs> in his entire situation. <laughs> Maybe it was fake, actually. Who knows? I mean, he might have he might have stolen it or something. I don't know. But, no. yeah, it, 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 was, it almost became a, a comedy in itself. You know, I mean, it's just like fake Romney guy, fake, fake pretending to be a Ron Paul supporter, a clearly fake phone call. And fake police on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, where, what city was this in again, Blake? In Nevada? What's in Reno. It? Okay, so it wasn't in Las it's Vegas far, because there might be other fake things in the city of Las Vegas. We could make a few other crass jokes about that, but I think we'll pass. Right. So, no, I, 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 why don't you tell everybody one more time because as so many people from Alfred Hitchcock to John B. Wells during one of our previous interviews says, the listening audience gets easily distracted you need to consistently remind them of of who they're listening to and what channel they're watching so blake we're probably going to let you go here we're going to queue up mark we're going to kind of bring him back for our final segment just to kind of touch on a couple other issues but i want everyone out there who hasn't seen your video to go see it so where can they do so good sir all right uh, i'll just say go to youtube and then uh check out uh dirty tricks nevada i think those are a, a few good keywords but like I said, uh, it was, uh, what was it, Monday, was it the 7th, I think? I think it was. It was Monday the 7th, uh, which can be found in either the Activist Post, uh, Prison Planet, or InfoWars. It was a Steve Watson article. That's great. That is great. So and, 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 tell, check that and tell people one more time, uh, we're obviously promoting Mark Claire's Lions of Liberty, Lion, L-I-O-N, lionsofliberty.com. Check oh, and that out. find it there, too, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, that's true. Thank you. Ooh, I'm double whammy. Yeah, find it there and then click Ew. on YouTube and make a comment on, oh, yeah, we can, we can make the whole thing happen. Absolutely. <laughs> but tell everybody where you do your radio show as well, because I, I didn't know this when we first connected with you. You said, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm a, I do radio myself. I'm like, that's beautiful. <laughs> we're expanding the network, and we're tightening the crocheted fabric fabric that cannot be pulled apart you know so tell people where they can right. find your radio show as well all right yes yeah, so thank you for the uh, i'll do the shameless plug here so i got i'm on freedomizerradio.com i have a show i do uh monday wednesday thursday from 12 to 1 30 pacific uh i can also be found on or at blog talk radio um the name of the show is called eccentric perspective which can also be found on itunes and i also have a website uh, eccentricperspective.com Beautiful. Well, I'll tell you what. Right, thank thanks, thank you so much for becoming a part of the new American media. I mean, this is, we started this site because we needed an outlet. It's not about us, although without a staff and a payroll, it, it is the only thing you can do, so it's often you. But it's not about us here. It's not about me. It's about whatever any person that cares about liberty and freedom can find you know and if, if you're out in nevada find us something tell your friends have them look around in montana have them look around in maine have them look around in ohio you know because we have to do this ourselves nobody's going to give us the truth unless we we find it and you were right there and you happen to be johnny on the spot with the camcorder and you did a good job so i appreciate the video as does mark because he invite he, he embedded it on his site so let, let's stay connected if you ever want to jump on and talk about some news of the day as the political season starts starts winding into full gear. I mean, it looks like Romney's the official nominee almost in theory, except for the fact that the delegate situation isn't as locked up as they think, which is why they're cheating at this late stage of the game. So if you want to join us in the next couple of weeks, you have an open opportunity. Just send us an email or give me a call on the side, and we can do that as well. Yeah, I'm sure we'll be in touch. Yeah, thanks again for having me on your show. And, sure. uh Sure thing. Thank you for the uh, Lions of Liberty and having my uh, article up there. Thanks Mark, again. thank you. Final, you got it. Thanks for making Mark, it. You have any final words, up, Mark? Man. For uh, any any final any final words for Blake? Just keep doing what you're doing, man. I, I'm I'm I'm. Okay, I wish I was in one of those caucus states where I could really go through an entire process. It's a little different here, but um, yeah, man, it's great to see you doing what you're doing. Keep it up. Oh, thank you, sir. All right, that was Blake. You know, I'll tell you what, the eccentric, it was it was really good having him on the program because, you know, sometimes you find these cool YouTube videos and you're like, wow, that was neat. And you don't think, wait, I can contact that person. I can I can connect with them. This this isn't complicated. You know, Mark, have you found it, it, it's starting to get a little easier as your clout is starting to improve that 
your network <laughs> is starting to grow? Because you guys have a clout over there. You have regular readers, I would say. Oh, you flatter me. I mean, yeah, we must have some regular readers because someone's we're getting someone someone's clicking on this thing. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I guess it's more about uh, well, me getting more comfortable in and reaching out and going out there and. and being willing to just spill my guts onto a blog and being willing to go reach out to a radio show and get like yours and go on or, or and that kind of thing and uh, because a year ago I wasn't doing any of that stuff so well tell me why I, you I, care why do you care instead of just watching the NBA playoffs and why do I care yeah tell me tell me what, what keeps uh, and by the way I gotta tell you while you're on Skype I I, I the click the the massive clickety clack of all of your keystrokes it is uh, it is fantastically um, audible. Oh, that's not me. That's okay. <laughs> no, hey, that's someone else in the room. <laughs> t t tell your cat Bootsy. Tell your cat Bootsy it's, to it's stop. It's that darn Bootsy. <laughs> oh, Bootsy. <laughs> da -da -da -da. And then it's a little sitcom theme. But no, I mean, why do you why do you focus on politics instead of just you know zoning out to sports or animation or video games or something? Why why do you give a s about give a hoot. this? Yeah, um, give a hoot. I like that. Give a hoot. I don't know. I mean, I don't know about you, but I really, really don't like getting stolen from. I really, I really don't like being robbed. <laughs> um, and that's what's happening. That's the, one of the main issues that got me started is the Federal Reserve. They literally print money, and every time they do that, they're stealing from my work. They're stealing from every second that I spend earning that money. Someone, and, Gen uh, John Q. Public, would say, what do you mean? And, and I'll, before we say oh, yeah. John Q. Public, I'll say, um, as a Cleveland sports fan, I feel like I've been robbed for 33 years, but that's a separate issue on the side if you want to get into. But um, why do you feel like you're getting robbed? Talk to John Q. Public. What does that mean, you're getting robbed? What well, is the yeah, Federal I mean, Reserve? How do they rob from you? What? I, I don't know it. about you, but my gas prices are going up. I think I just spent 32 bucks to fill up half a tank. Ooh. Now I fill up at half a tank, so that that was annoying. Um, it, what people don't really address, everyone cries about how politicians have to do something about high gas prices and and high high grocery prices, and uh, they are doing something. They are they are letting uh, the monetary policy get out of control. What most people don't understand about, about you know prices and rising prices, everyone thinks it's uh, evil speculators or um, something like that, or maybe the the Saudis, those evil Muslims, like raising the prices or something. But um, you remind me, we need <laughs> we need sound. We used to have sound effects of like boo hiss. We used to have like this whole sound effects thing of like light applause and. and it always bring back Jim Mora. I mean, I know it doesn't make any sense, but. <laughs> oh, you know what? I just cued money out of printing? that. What do you mean, money printing? <laughs> you know, yeah. hey, wait a minute. Why don't we do a skit? And yes, yes, listeners, thank you very much. Uh, you can join us as well. But why don't why don't we why don't we do a skit? Money printing, <laughs> the Federal Reserve. <laughs> I just hope I can fill up my gas tank. <laughs> I mean, that would be kind of funny if you could find the right actor. I think. I don't know. Well, we got Aaron. Cal we can reach out to Aaron Calafato for and I did show. and we I can... did talk to Aaron this week. That could be funny. But so so you feel like you're being stolen from John Q. Public. You spent thirty bucks at the gas tank. What does that have to do with the Federal Reserve? Because like you said, some people think, oh, it's the Muslims or it's the, right. uh, I don't know. What else did you say? The, the speculators, other speculators. They're oh, often blamed. Evil the, Wall Street. The evil oil companies. Urgh. Don't get me wrong. They're a little evil too. That but one percent. Erg. Yeah, or it's more like the point oh 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 one percent, but um, Fair and enough. that's the Federal Reserve. That's the people that control the banking system. But I thought and that's a federal government agency. Like that's like like uh, I don't know. Well, John Q, <laughs> let me let me. Well, curious, uh, John. Uh, well, I thought that it was just like the police station. <laughs> yeah, we need them to build the roads and run the banking system. I've heard this before. <laughs> um, talk to that person. Now, what, what's very interesting about the Federal Reserve is. It, and I, people used to say the Federal Reserve is a private, and it is kind of private, but it's not even as good as private because something private would actually have to like respond to a market forces or something like that or ha serve customers or what have you. But well, the Federal Reserve is a, it's a government-mandated, privately-owned bank. It's a monopoly. Gets, it's a it's monopoly. a monopoly on the issuance of our currency. What's wrong with and monopolies, though? Nothing, actually. I, I'm all for monopolies if they oh. are. If, if they are. 
if they come from the market place, which Hang they on. rarely. Well, which wait, rarely wait, happens. wait, wait. Hang on. So, so let's back up. So, if if capitalism and competition creates one clear, clearly defined winner that provides a superior product while not abusing the people or damaging the planet in the process of earning their profits, people will choose them because this is just a far superior product for a far superior price through a far superior organization and company that has a, a a civic responsibility to not I don't know pee in their own swimming pool so everybody says I'm going to put my money here and then the others go by the wayside because you can't compete with say a Coke or a Pepsi if they were the best instead of having somebody almost as good or just you know a slightly slanted different version am I following you correctly on that or with the mono- monopoly thing you are learning so fast, John Q. Public. Uh, a few minutes ago, you were barely could not form a be, sentence. I've so been <laughs> listening to Lions of Liberty. Yes, to get your daily dose of Lions of Liberty. That's okay, what we so, recommend. So, so to, to bring it back ales. now. So to bring it back now. So th- they are controlling the monetary system, and and they are devaluing your money. Yeah. Well, essentially, they get to make money at, the, at their own will. And I, we say printing money because that's just what we say because that's literally all what they used to do is just print it out in printing presses and ship it off to whatever banks would need it or whatever foreign banks would need it as has recently come out. But now it's it's even worse than that. It's all digital. I think I read something like, and I'm literally making the percentage up because I don't remember what it was, but it's, it's something low. It's something like 20% of money that exists, theoretical money, is in cash. Even in cash, and the rest is all digital now. It's all just numbers in a bank. And to create more money, all they have to do is go punch some numbers in the computer, move a decimal point over, and say, you now have this money. Let and me that tell all you. sounds wonderful, actually. I mean, well, I would love to just have that done to my bank account. Too, but <laughs> but not, it won't get can, done to your bank account. Yeah, we'll That's why that. I, we might rather not get I, I, that later. I saw, something, I saw something on The Onion one time, and it said, like, 98% of people wish everybody else would take public transportation. <laughs> right. <laughs> Something similar to that. So anyway, you, you got this system and, and it's a bit of a sham. And, 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 and let me ask you this. I've had this theory, th- this little sneaking suspicion one day I'm going to wake up and go on Twitter and it's going to have a Chinese symbol on it. <laughs> and I'm going to go on Skype, and it's going to have a Chinese flag on it. And I'm going to go on my email, and it's going to have a Chinese flag on it. And you're going to say, rut row. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys are right. Dun. Yeah, well, okay, there's some of that. But I think if everything, 80%, like you said, you made up the numbers, so let's just call it 80 trillion, gazillion, billion percent. It's a lot. Let's, move let's just way. say if a lot of the money isn't even money, it's just a fake concept in a digital world. Are you telling me that there couldn't be some Trojan viruses hidden somewhere where on one day, call it 9-11, pick another July 4th, you know, pick another significant date, you know, 911 being the emergency number, or July 4th, the independence number saying, who's your daddy? We own your debt. I just wonder if one day they're going to say, we know the game you're playing. We know what you're doing deflating our currency. We loaned you good money. You're trying to pay us with garbage. We have just logged into every bank account and withdrew every zero in digits. Thank you, America. We are paid in full. Go <clears throat> pound sand. Go. <clears throat> uh, I'm trying not to be crass here. I think here, they but... did that scheme in office space, didn't they? But that Something w- like that. They okay. rounded off the zero, the pennies, the, the quarter, the pennies, percentage of the pennies. The percentages of the pennies were at. Okay, now imagine they just said, let's go for 100%. You know, until they're paid off. Like, what if what if that started World War III? I mean, do, do you see a scenario where a frustrated bank or a lender, a frustrated lender could just stick it to the U.S. and say, we know what you're doing, and we're not playing your game. Bring it. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's that kind of is what's happening in a in a unannounced way. Like, a lot of countries are moving off the dollar. Um, some countries were forcing were forcing off the dollar, like um, with Iran, were actually not allowing their central bank to um, to a- to access a lot of markets. So they're actually starting to use gold and trade oil for gold with India and other countries. So we're, we're actually encouraging some uh, some hard currency use right now. But um, even Russia, Russia and uh, China, a lot of the BRIC countries, Russia and Brazil, a lot of the, those countries are starting to um, use other currencies. So while they're not putting out a press release saying we're rejecting the dollar and rejecting your money, um, it's just happening. It's just occurring. It's going to occur. It's occurring in regular society where uh, people are buying gold a lot more than they used to. Um, there's a reason that the price of gold is, is more than doubled. 
to go along in the last you know, four or five years to go along with all this money printing. Um, gold ownership in China of the regular man. The government of China is actually encouraging their population to own gold, which That's is very interesting. interesting and, and they've here you're chastised for own gold in the land of the free. You're you're double taxed on it. You're um, it taxed as a collectible, so it's like a it's a really high tax rate if you want to report any kind of earnings on gold. Uh, it's it's very discouraged here. You can actually go to jail for using silver. As a uh, as the man uh, Von Nothouse, he was uh, making the Liberty Dollar. He was just producing a, a a coin, a silver coin, which is you know last I checked that in the Constitution that's what we're supposed to use. Actually, he's he's probably going to go to jail, possibly for life, uh, for the charge of. I think they actually tied it to terrorism, even something about. Oh, of um, course, we we got to protect ourselves, uh, protect your children from this guy. New terrorism, right? Yeah. So, um, and there's a reason they do these things, though. It's because they have to protect their sacred cow of of their monopoly on money, because it's literally the only thing that keeps them in power is is their their monopoly on the money, and it keeps them in power and it keeps us in poverty. And that's I'd like to flip that. I'd like to flip that equation a little bit, and it's not going to happen overnight. So we but, would do that with with socialism, right? Just communism. If we all just share John the same Q, stuff. You're wandering off again. You're wandering can't, off. The can't stage. can't we up. can't we just put a hundred dollars and have a hundred people each get one dollar? That would be quite a banquet. <laughs> we would have that evening. <laughs> Well, if we all pay into the same money, we can buy a hundred dollars of groceries. And that's and, you know, and this comes down to a general principle. Of, uh, it's in, in a lot of ways, it's almost irrelevant if the Fed is privately run or government run, because the principle remains exactly the same. Is that even if it's, I don't believe that the people that run the Federal Reserve are well intentioned. They gave um, over ten trillion dollars to foreign banks. I don't see how that's well intentioned to help the country and help the the value of our currency. But don't that, drug de- don't aside, don't drug dealers give elementary school kids crack cocaine so they can get them as a regular client though as far as i know well, that's, I, that's good that's, that's what i've heard that's good for people wait that's, that's proving good for your business point. okay continue let's, Private no, let's get into war on drugs rank because we'll need to really extend the show oh, well, well, well you know it's well, been one of these shows where we, we're just rolling with it as, as long as you feel like chit chat and we, we like having you we're talking with mark claire of lions of liberty i know i think you had a couple things to do today but are you running out of time is your clock ticking or you have no, a couple I, moments I can, I can stick on for a few more minutes. Well, you know, take it where you want to take it. I mean, you're talking about the, the Federal Reserve bailing out all these foreign banks. We can go with that. We can talk about Mitt Romney. We can talk about Barack Obama. I'll tell you what I'm really interested in. I'm uh, Bring all of the, the, the skepticism, the criticism, the cynicism, and any other ism that you feel like bringing. But I called so many people the day before the 2008 election saying, hey, I keep hearing this goofy story that Barack Obama wasn't born in the United States. I don't think this can be true. How can I debunk this? And I, and I went through tens and tens and tens and tens and tens and tens and tens of phone calls. I, I'm tracking. I'm ca- talking to people at the White House. I'm talking to people in the state of Hawaii. I'm talking to people in the Republican National Committee and the Democratic National Committee. I'm trying to track down the the Electoral College. I'm calling. I am calling everywhere, and nobody can give me a straight answer. And then it turns out. Have you seen the story on the Drudge Report on Infowars? The the one where Barack Obama's biography. And the word biography means I wrote this about me. <laughs> Says I was born in Kenya. I mean, are we supposed to take him at his word, or are we crazy birthers for even bringing it up? I won't lump you into my group because I'm toxic. Even Glenn <laughs> Beck makes fun of birthers, for God's sake. Even so, Glenn Beck. Even, you know, I'm just saying. So I'm just trying to put this to bed, and every time we lift up a rock to make sure there's nothing under it, we find another squiggly thing. What are we doing here, and what do you make of all this? Yeah, I mean, a little bit of an aside, but um, yeah, I, I don't. It's not a big something aside. I like to. Fo- it's not something I like to. Fo- yeah, it's a big. So here's central central banking. Oh yeah, by the way. <laughs> oh, the by the way, would you like an apple pie? What? Oh yeah. So anyway, okay, go ahead. Um, yeah, but uh, it's not something I try to focus on, or um, you know, because I, I think even if. Joe Biden or Hillary Clinton or Mitt Romney or whoever the hell else was in office. John Q. Public. Yeah, we'd have the same kind of policies and and philosophies running government, and that's the kind of that's what I want to focus on for the most part. However, this shit is. Oh, damn it! We're supposed to be PG thirteen. Oh well. 
I'm usually really good with this stuff, but um, I, I love how your correction was. Oh damn it! <laughs> we'll get anyway. Let me, let me steer this back on track. Oh damn it! Wait, that's Hot another. Tracks. Let me let Hot me tell stuff. you. I, I worked at I worked at a Beverly Hills talent agency. Um, we'll just leave it as the, as that. We don't need to name names here. But I worked at a big big talent agency out here in Los Angeles, and and I worked in the. I would often interact with the voiceover department. I was one of those literal male guys for like a month or something. And so they told us there's this formula of swear words. You can say this word, but only three or four times. It, it, it carries a numerical value of three. Now, oh, so it, I'm probably still good. I got like one more I th- S, two I think, more Ds in me or something like that. I, I, or one <laughs> F. So one, I, okay, like that. That, that could all be construed as very gross and disgusting if you want to <laughs> insert different words literally or figuratively. But uh, yeah, but they told me there's this mathematical formula where you can say drop one big bomb – Oh wait, Big Brother's listening now. We could be potential terrorists under the NDAA. I meant a big word. Jeez, you know how crazy this is. But yeah, you could use one big bad word, or you could use a couple of little words, or a combination, but not too much. Anyway, I forget where we were at. It was just pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> the world's going freaking crazy. Is <laughs> I think it's the general point. Uh, banks are printing money, and uh, the president might be from Kenya. We, we don't know. <laughs> But no, I mean it is no crazy because no so suddenly, I mean, I mean this is like I never focus on this stuff, but at the same time I can't ignore it. I don't want to ignore things that seem to be biography. gaining more and more credence. Biography. I mean, if I write a biography of, you know, he was the president of the Harvard Law Review. Doesn't that mean that you review things? Yeah, I mean but, they're saying that this was a mistake of the literary agent for 15 but years. I'm still wondering. Yeah, I'm still wondering how. Like, and he time, wrote it. He didn't even think that was a problem. And if you're reviewing, you know, law and such like that, maybe you just <laughs> review the, the pamphlet on the back of your book too. I mean, I he, re- he, I mean he wrote the thing. I know it's they so laugh. comical. I don't even know how to even respond to this stuff. I'm it's still like, trying to digest it. It's a Saturday Night Live skit. I mean, this has got to be on South Park. You know, and I was saying, like you said, if, if you drop an S, so did Jackie, that sports babe Taylor. Thanks, Jackie, and thanks, Mark. You guys are on par now. Let, let's see if you I can. I heard it from her. I thought it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I learned it from listening to you, okay? Um, but... I don't know. It's it's just comical in, in this post-South Park world is what I was getting at, is that I think the standards have expanded just a little bit. And online, you can do whatever the hell you want. But anyway, my, my point being, it gets to the point of lunacy where this should be on South Park, where a president of the Harvard Law Review, who <laughs> his own biography in three sentences says, I was born in Kenya, and I've done this. He wrote this. And if he didn't, he's the president of the Harvard Law Review. Yeah. You should review the three sentences. So either you were and you've lied about being from here or you weren't and you lied about being from there to get free money on some sort of exchange student visa thing. Yeah, I think, I think the overall point with all this stuff is, I mean, and the things they don't, I think the things they don't talk about in these news stories are, um, are the real things. I mean, they're not talking about the businesses he used to work for. The CIA fronted businesses. These are not conspiracy theories. These are well-documented facts. You can go look at the companies he worked for, and then you what, can find out about them. What did, he, what did I know I'm going to distract you here from from the, the, the angle you're going. Can you remember the angle you're going to take this? Because I'm ready to jump in. Dude, I got so many angles. I don't <laughs> even know where to go. The point is, uh, I mean, overall, he's hiding things. They're hiding certain things about his past. I'm not going to claim to know what they are, but, I mean, it's clear that there's some sort of they're hiding his Transcripts are hiding things about him. You know, I don't know the full truth of why, but I mean, if you, if you look into his past, I mean, his father and Tim Geithner's father were both working for the CIA in Southeast Asia mm-hmm. um, back in the 70s. This is all coming off the cuff because I don't have any of the stuff in front of me that I've read, but... We, I'll tell you what, um, then. Then, then before, before we dig this hole any deeper... <laughs> let's let's uh l- let's, let's press pause, pause on this, and I think we, think should, we should revisit, revisit this, this because I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna release something with all of our phone calls. I mean, we're gonna provide this document, you know, for what it's worth. I don't know. We're just some people with the new America. I did this in '08 before I started this site. I was just a guy trying to dispute and and fact check and debunk something that just it seemed wacky. We're going to put this out there with every single phone number we called, at what date, at what time, who we spoke to, what they said, and let other people m- make the same phone calls and see what they can get. Because it's just it's, the, the more layers of this onion that you peel back, the, the more I'm starting to cry and the more I'm starting to get frustrated. I was asking you why you do this mm-hmm. in, instead of, you said you don't like being stolen from. Yeah. 
I really don't. It's really offensive to me. <laughs> Doesn't it feel like like the Bill of Rights is being stolen from you, and 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 your birthright as an American citizen, where you should have liberty <laughs> and freedom, is being stolen as well? well this well, is more the one than thing money. about that. You it's know what? Money. They can violate my rights, and uh, they can do all these things. They can't steal them. That's impossible. They can violate them, not steal them. Yeah, I like that. Exactly, and because because it doesn't come from them; it comes from God. Right? This did not Maybe. give me rights. You know, um, at least a lot of libertarians feel that we were born with certain rights. It's called natural law. Uh, John Locke was a philosopher who talked about this. Um, natural law assumes certain things about a human being when they're born. You have the right to life. You have the right to make your own decisions. You have the right to defend yourself against harm. You have the right not to be harmed by others. You have certain natural rights. So the, what the Bill of Rights did was to state a lot of these things on paper, but it didn't give me them. You know, I already have them. So they can ignore them and they can violate them and they can completely disregard them, but they can absolutely not steal them. And that's something we're trying to stand up for with, you know, what we're doing here, too. It, it all ties back into the same thing. I deserve not to be stolen from. I deserve my property. So when a, a bank decides to just double the amount of currency that exists and eventually that will cut mine in half and further, yeah, that's that to me, that's right up there with violating all those rights. And these are the things we're trying to point out to people because I don't think most people really even realize. And that's, that's the most insidious kind of theft is the kind that you don't realize is happening. I mean, that's why they started taking taxes out of paychecks before, instead of having people write a check. Because I guess you look at the numbers and you see it, but you don't really think about it. It just happens. It's just already gone by the time it's you touch your scraps. Nobody flips. And that's what's even worse is about the, the money printing is that your prices just go up. Nobody really sends you an email saying, hey, by the way, we, uh, we doubled the money supply last year, so you might see some higher gas prices. You don't even get a memo or anything. It just happens. But completely behind the scenes, and, and thank God that some of this is actually coming out to light in the last few years. I mean, six years ago, you, the words Federal Reserve weren't conversation pieces ever. So that's that's a, man, a big positive that's changing, and we're trying to expand that conversation and get it out there as far and reaching as we possibly can, you know, on the Internet, which is our really the platform that's letting liberty kind of um, expand in the greatest way possible. It's pretty much the greatest example of a free market is the internet, where anybody can put their ideas, their products, whatever they want out there, and the market responds. And, you know, I guess we the market has responded and tells us we're the 122nd most viewed libertarian website right now. But, and by the way, I think, I think you're going to crack that, that 100 pretty soon. I just wanted to jump in here because you're talking about the internet. By the way, on ESPN it says, which team are you rooting for to win the Heat Pacers series? 74% are saying Pacers. Every single state in the United States out of 68,000 votes, it's all red. They're all voting for the Pacers. And the state of Florida, 51 to 49, is rooting for the Pacers to win. Just you, Florida, wow. By the way, Indiana's 89 to 11, and Florida has gone to the Pacers 51 to 49. So, you know, there's something that can be said about the free market. Sometimes you get things you don't expect, and sometimes karma's a bitch. But, mm -hmm. but but when crony capitalism replaces capitalism, you get you get fatty Mike Moore out there, you know, making these documentaries saying capitalism's evil and er, 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 er. and then he goes on to explain about how they, like, to show you how the government created the housing bubble, but not really. But then blames capitalism without ever talking about how capitalism, where capitalism fit into it, because it doesn't. There's nothing capitalist about a central bank printing money and deciding where it goes. It's so, the exact opposite. So, so how are we supposed to decipher when so many people grew up on ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox News, uh, you know, any of these places where there's, there's a dynamic that's just being told right now? And, and I've heard a lot – by the way, I want to say I've heard a lot of people say if ABC or CBS or NBC wants better ratings, start telling the truth. And you there will you actually find your audience. Stop spinning your junk – because no, it, it's not standing the sniff test of the, 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 the internet anymore. We're not buying it anymore. So w w where do you think people are supposed to go when we've kind of bailed on the traditional news outlets here and we're, we're just not sure because there's so many quote-unquote conspiracy theories online? How do you decipher your news and how do you determine when you decide something's factual versus questionable because you run a you run a fringe site just like myself i'll call my site a fringe site and yours is a fringe sure, site why not? only cuz we're not corporate <laughs> bought and we're not paying our bills doing this so i guess our passion to do the right thing makes us fringe fine i'll take that as a badge of honor how do you decipher what's true and what's not cuz a lot of people don't know the difference these days 
Yeah, and it's not easy. And I, I think a lot of times when you question something, people come to the conclusion that you're a wild, wacky conspiracy theorist and then and therefore believe the most wild conspiracy theory they've ever heard. Like if I if I if I say something about wait, why did why did it say Obama was born in Kenya on this thing fifteen on years his ago? biography on that his, he and, wrote. And then and then why did it well, you know, why did his uh, certificates for his school say he was like Muslim, and then why did it say he was apply a foreign aid student? There's all these like things that occurred. I'm I'm not even saying I know anything about why these occurred, but I'm just asking like, hey, is this weird? Anyone? That's literally all we might say. But even <laughs> like saying is this weird makes you like suddenly that means that I think Obama is a uh, shape shifting reptile that came here from you know the planet Obamacon, and he is our emperor lord sent to you know present socialism to the planet, and that's obviously now, the conspiracy theory. We're, we're I actually, I, I just gotta, I just gotta let our <laughs> listeners know that Lions of Liberty in the New American Media is working on a documentary called Obamacon, <laughs> and it's and it, that's it, a great it, title. I, I think I just yeah. Well, well it, it's I, kind I was, of I was like kind of doing a, I was doing like a Decepticon thing, and it's then kind of like Comic Con. Him into it. We're, we're we're going to hold an event at the Marriott across from the Hilton down at Comic-Con down in <laughs> We're gonna San Diego. We're going to do it right across from George Clooney's house, actually. <laughs> we'll do two of them. We'll, we'll have one across from Clooney's house where the smug factor is at seven, and then the other one will be at Comic-Con down in San Diego. <laughs> but this is the Obama-Con. Okay, I don't know. I'm just kidding, obviously. But it's one of those days yeah. where the ideas are flowing. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, some people are deemed not so – you know, you're absolutely crazy for asking the question. And I know South Park, to bring South Park back in, and Glenn Beck back in. They made fun of Glenn Beck where Cartman was, I'm just asking the question. I'm just asking the question. I'm not saying, I'm just asking the question. I do a bad <laughs> Cartman impression, but he do, the whole intro is the Glenn Beck kind of thing, and it's about Wendy Testaberger. Yeah. Is she a slut? I'm not saying she's a slut. I'm just asking the question. You know, <laughs> But it's just kind of funny to me because when something smells, you ask, hey, what smells? Man, I smell something. Do you guys smell smell that too? Whether it's smoke or a stinking carcass of a rat right. that fell behind your desk, it doesn't matter what you smell. You, <laughs> dude, I smell something. Do you smell that too? Oh wait, you're crazy. <laughs> you're crazy. You're crazy. Wait, wait, no, no. There's no I, smell in here. What I, are you talking about? I literally smell something that 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 stinks <laughs> like like Limburger cheese mixed with uh, mayonnaise and uh, ginger ale left out on the porch for two weeks. Like it's it, it's a little wrong. Do you guys notice that? And and then some people say we're crazy. T talk to John Q. Public that says, oh, well, if you want to question these things, you're just nuts. You you're just you're, – you're out of your element, Donnie. You're out of your element, Donnie. And just leave it at that. What do you say to those people? Yeah, I think that um, the problem is that well, – I mean, this is changing rapidly as, as we discuss with the internet. But the problem is that for many years, um, for me included, most of my life, I got my news from like one of four news sources – ABC, NBC, uh, CNN, you know, they're all related, CNN, um, Fox, Fox, like four companies or so. And you probably need a little more diversity, especially when those companies are all kind of involved in some of the same industries and kind of get money from some of the same places. I'm not saying there's a grand conspiracy. I'm just asking the question. No, I'm, just, <laughs> I, I'm just saying nice. maybe it's time to look outside the this sort of – and people say, oh, but that – and then, then you get the argument. But don't you love the free market and, and that the media made them the free market? Like, actually, no. The government gives out oh, broadcast licenses. Oh, um, hang on, hang on. Wait, wait. That, that, that's wait, why that, there's nothing free market hang about on, the, wait, the broadcast let's, let's, airwaves. Hold on, Mark. Let's do this vaudeville style. I need you to participate. Easy, partic easy, big fella. I need you to participate with me here. I need you to join with me and go, oh. So ready? Oh. No, you didn't participate. But okay, so, so I want to pause on that point. Didn't the free market make ABC, CNN, and Fox, and whatever, add your other threes? Didn't the free market pick them? And if those are the four, then those must therefore be the best. I just wanted to slow that down because that's actually a good point. Rebut that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, in a sense, but in a sense, absolutely not. <laughs> because, I mean, oh, back, when they, back when they discovered, like, broadcasting in the airwaves, and this is a very non-technical thing. You mean in Atlantis? Yes, back when they figured that all out, and then and then hid it away for thousands of years, and then we found it out again like a hundred yes. years ago. <laughs> yes. Says crazy conspiracy theorists. So um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, I mean, what the, the government did is they took monopolistic control of the airwaves and handed it out to 
whoever they handed it out to. So ABC has a broadcast license. There's only a certain number of, of air, uh, you know, airwaves, space and such available, and the government you know, controls a monopoly on that, and they give that to ABC, they give it to NBC, they give it to Fox. So they get their kickback, perhaps. They got a little bit of a head start. Now, cable's separate. Cable's not regulated in that way. So, you know, you okay. could argue that, you know, cable is, and I think there is a lot of more diversity on cable, actually. So I, th- I think cable is actually a good example of, you know, you see Fox Business, which has a little more... Um, I like Fox Business. libertarian kind of bent and I actually don't even have cable I have it for a few years I, oh I, Mark I, you I, gotta I hang said, out over here a little bit more often to heck with the whole system but you know yeah, okay. it's all it's all on YouTube I can find anything I want um, good point you're the, you're the Facebook generation did you get in on the IPO I have not <laughs> I'm gonna short I'm gonna short it Honestly, like in a week when it when it peaks, yeah, it's it's, it's going to be big, and then we'll see. I, I don't know. For me, for j- just my personal thought, I mean, I don't begrudge anyone, but really, what's the difference between MySpace and Facebook? I don't know. Just whatever happened in the past, yeah. and uh, anyhow, one might have had some CIA money, and one might have not. Uh oh, here oh, he goes again. Oh, you didn't just, just do that. Like, Ready? Shit. Oh, no, he didn't. Okay, so so the state of the country is a little weird right now, and. You know, people are saying, and I've said, and I've heard a lot of our guests, our listeners, our Twitter followers, everyone that follows us at the newamericanmedia.com, American underscore media underscore, youtube.com slash the new American media, blah, 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 blah. A lot of them are saying that this is an oligarchy. The Republicans and Democrats are one party. They're two sides of the same coin. They keep us fighting over fringe issues like, I don't know, abortion or gay rights or something, you know, that keeps us arguing. And we're all being stolen from. Let's let's shift forward here because I know you're an eternal optimist for the Ron Paul movement and maybe the delegate strategy. We can come right back around to that in just a second. Let's imagine Ron Paul doesn't exist, and I know that's impossible for you, but <laughs> let's say we buy into the media narrative that this is Obama and this is versus Romney, okay? D- should we expect anything different from an Obama presidency, from a Mitt Romney presidency? And what if Ron Paul does officially suspend his campaign and say, I will support Mitt Romney, and these are the things I believe, and I hope he believes these as well? Are what, we still imagining? Because that's... I'm I'm totally Still imagining. Pretend land, right? I'm, okay. I'm totally Im- make sure. Ruh, ruh, raggy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we're totally in. And I knew it was Mr. James. And then you pull off right. the, the the mask, right. and it was actually the monster all along. So, Ron Paul worked for Mitt Romney all along. It's all been a secret plan. Ha-ha. In Kenya, yeah. in Obamacon. Anyway, so <laughs> a Romneycon. Ro- sure. So, what would you say to somebody that's like, well, if it's between Barack Obama and Mitt Romney, I gotta go Obama. Or if it's between Romney and Obama, I gotta go Romney. What would you say to both of those two people, John Q and John G. Public? To both of them, I would say whatever makes you feel better, man, because it's the same thing. Why <laughs> I is mean, it the, the same? The policies are not different. I mean, some opinions, some some media sound bites might be different. For example, they had the hoo ha over gay marriage last week because North Carolina defined it between a man and a woman. Obama came out and said, "I support gay marriage, but my policy remains the same: keep it between the states." Then they asked Romney. He said, "I believe it's between a man and a woman. His policy is still keep it between the states." So here we are debating this whole thing when ultimately their same their policy is exactly what, the what, same. What was their health care? So, what was their health care? talk about it for two weeks, how, and then it's still the same. So you vote for either one. I don't, I mean, what? you know, we don't like to focus on the fringe issues, but. What was their health care policy? Because isn't that. Oh, yeah. Their keep it between policies, the states, both, except that both Obama are based goes. based on individuals being forced to buy health insurance to fund the entire system. Okay, so vote for Mitt Romney, and you can have that. Or vote for Obama, and you can have that. Uh, Great, they both what a choice. Indefinite detention of Americans without trial. They both stated this. Well, I mean, what do you Obama mean? Well, hasn't stated that, but he signed a document. What do you mean What do you mean indefinite detention? What's that what, issue? What? what? Um, I'm John Q. Public again. This is another thing we've written about extensively on our blog. Uh, our website, linesofliberty.com, is the NDAA, which is signed on December 31st under the cover of New Year's Eve last year. Dick Clark, New uh, Year's Rockin' which, Eve. Which I mean, it's a huge bill. It's an omnibus bill. It's it's just a, it's meant to fund all of the defense for the year. So it's it's a big bill. But because it's a big bill, and you you if you don't support the troops, if you vote against it, they try to slide in all these other little things along the way, as they do with all the major bills. So that that way, anybody can't nobody can vote against it because people, you know, everybody wants their little piece of the pie. In this case, one of the things they slipped in was a provision that allows for Americans to be detained indefinitely on the mere suspicion of su- even something um, named material support or uh, uh, another word they use for uh, for terrorism. And uh, 
So could that could that be if you retweeted the wrong funny comment from somebody on Twitter? I have no idea. Nobody knows, uh, right? The problem. And this week there was actually a positive development in that a a federal judge ruled against that provision, actually, citing that very reason that no one would even have an idea how to not violate that. Because, you know, for example, one of the people that brought or that um, brought a suit against the federal government for the law, the journalist Christopher Hedges, he he said, you know. I go and interview terrorist leaders sometimes. You know, this is part of journalism. That's what you do. You interview everybody. People, you know, CNN interviewed Osama bin Laden. It's not like this crazy thing. You, you're a crazy terrorist if you're doing. People, inter- journalists interview every side. They do this. So CNN could get shut down. You know, this is one of those, like, the, yeah. what, what is that quote? It's like the, when first they came for the gypsies, and I wasn't a gypsy, so I said nothing. And then they came for the Jews, and I wasn't a Jew, so I said, and then they came for me. You know, I, I'm totally butchering that quote, but the point is it's like people have this tendency to just, well, you know, I don't care about spy drones. I'm not protesting the G8 in Chicago. Well, right. wait until they fly over from Chicago to Los Angeles and hit you up somewhere over Nebraska. Sorry, I didn't do the math. I don't know if that actually goes over it or not. <laughs> if it's a, well, Let's just say they take a diversion and make sure they hit your p- place in I Nebraska. I think there's a route you could take. That would, there's would a route sense. you could take. So you end up – I mean, what if they find your stuff in, in – you know, I watched Judge Napolitano talking about this. I mean, thousands of – Freaking drones! Like we have a Fourth Amendment against illegal search and seizure. Something like twenty thousand drones in the sky by twenty seventeen. I mean, are we are we just are we just supposed to stand here fine. on the side and go? Well, that doesn't apply to me. Why should I stand up and be the squeaky wheel that gets cut down here? I, I know I'm mixing. I mean, metaphors, even if but... we think there's one drone per terrorist, we're supposed to think there's twenty thousand terrorists running around. Well, shouldn't stuff be blowing up like daily? Like, shouldn't a lot of like shouldn't there be constant stuff, bad things happening if all these terrorists? Are just that need all these drone surveillance throughout the whole country? You, are just you mean floating like around here. You, you mean like Ron Paul supporters and former military vets and, and people like uh, that? Yeah, you can find them at your local state GOP convention, I guess. Well, well, the Department of Homeland Security <clears throat> it, it issued that document stating that you know returning veterans and people with Ron Paul bumper stickers should be considered potential terrorists. What? Yeah. You saw that, right? Oh yeah, yeah. That was, I believe, the Mayak report in 2008 or 2009 that was put out. And I mean, that's, not, that's only one circumstance. But Nicely um, done. There's been several instances where the, the government, the DHS, has put out memos saying, you know, watch out for the Constitution Party, watch out for Bob Barr supporters, Ron Paul supporters, Libertarian. These uh, anybody that mentions the Constitution could be considered a terrorist. I mean, it's 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 so crazy that I, I have to start laughing. At but what it's point? So scary that it's absurd. At I mean, what point? You know, I went to Washington D.C. as an eighth grader, and it was. A, Obviously, a different. I asked a girl out at the top of the Washington Monument. That was awesome, but I remember I went to the 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 Jefferson Memorial, and I'm like, "This is boring. Who's this guy?" You know, and I'm I'm walking around like, "Yeah, there's Jefferson." All these quotes on the wall. I'm reading Jefferson now, going, "Where in the hell is our Thomas Jefferson today? A respected man who's standing up and saying these things. Where is Thomas Jefferson today?" And this guy. I mean, he would be on every watch list that you could imagine, be it a Ron Paul, a Rand Paul, or so, something <laughs> yeah. different. But, I mean, where is the Thomas Jefferson today? Because he had a quote, and, 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 for, and I think you and I have had real spiritual conversations. If, if we could veer this off for, for half a conversation and bring it right back real quick. I, I believe in the existence of a supreme being that created life on this earth. Are we on the same page, or we have slightly different opinions? Uh, I'm in the I'm I'm somewhere in the middle on that. Okay. I believe in something else more than you know sticking. Uh, you know. Stickin <laughs> there's a to... there's a Simpsons where they vote for for like uh it was against him and Ned Flanders and it's something for like uh the neighborhood watch and it says well I vote for someone else and so instead of voting for like Homer Homer they all the entire crowd just says someone else someone yeah. else and the whole crowd was like yeah I'm all about someone else. But but me, yeah. I, I, I I don't know if it's a one, it's a something, as I a thing, a force, but a so presence. Let, you know, I might not define it that specifically, but you know, and generally, I'm, and I'm totally cool with that. My point is this: the Thomas Jefferson quote that I'm referencing is, "Oh, <clears throat> resistance to tyranny is obedience to God." Right. Now now I take that quite personal. Resistance to tyranny is obedience to God. If you want to enslave my neighbor or brother, then you are my enemy. 
Well, if you I want mean, to, it, it, if you want to indefinitely detain my neighbor, brother, or sister, then you are my enemy. If if you want to imprison me, then you are my enemy. And and you have to draw a line in the sand at some point and say, this is my enemy. And it ju- there are more and more people worried that our government has turned into the quote unquote enemy. What would you do with that 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 Jefferson quote? Take it wherever you want. It's just it. I, I'm I'm feeling the urge to mention it right now and get your thoughts on it. Yeah, well, if the theory purported by those that believe in a singular God, if the theory is that uh, God, crea- crea- God created man in their image, then by logic it stands to um, reason that m- that man should be allowed to be as free as possible because that is the creation and you shouldn't be messing with it anymore. So by that extension of logic, tyranny would be the exact opposite of that. So I think that makes a lot of sense. Do you think anyone knows who Thomas Jefferson is right now? No. <laughs> How can we fix this? Can it, can, can we do a series it's of videos? The schools, man, because the public schools are are, are 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 just destroying everyone's brain. Well, I'll tell, I'll tell you what. We'll, we'll go we'll go off on one other slight tangent and we'll wrap this up here. I know we've we've kept you over a little longer. And I, I'm I, I have to go see Avengers soon and and get really pumped up about America. So. <clears throat> please, do, please don't pull a Jackie That's Taylor and start singing the the South Park uh, Team America <laughs> World Police song about America. No, I know I'm not allowed to use the F because I use America. Them. Yeah, <laughs> something. Yeah, shucks. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Golly gee. No, I w- I was gonna take this a slightly different direction, <clears throat> and you know, you're going to see the Avengers. I mean, what 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 what's the point in going down a different path this at this <laughs> juncture? I mean, you, you know, I I keep we'll we'll take it to the Avengers. I I will change topics now because I I have been saying for a long time, and you know this. I'm a big Cleveland sports fan. LeBron James was bigger than sports. He was a Rocky Balboa, rags to riches, local boy makes good. Hey, the Rust Belt's going through some hard times. The jobs are leaving. They took my jobs. I, I'm doing nothing but quoting South Park tonight. But basically, LeBron James could have been a hero, you know, and, and, and he didn't. He failed. And you watch something like the Avengers, or you watch something like you know, some this of these... is a very interesting analogy. I'll let you go. But I, uh, anyway, I just had to put out that I have an idea. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to stop. Go to your idea. Go. Uh, what you're saying, what LeBron James did uh, when he moved, when he he kind of had a decision. He had a cr- critical juncture. In the his dark life. side. Where to go? Yeah. Can do you remain fighting for your hometown, fighting being the underdog, and just looking to bring a championship that way, and looking to be victorious, or do you just join the fancier opposition and just just you know fade into the background and not be worried about? It? And that's kind of the debate that's been going on the last week um, with the announcements of the Kapal campaign. Of course, the media headlines are saying. Paul dropped out, even Drudge, who's usually pretty sympathetic, Paul out, you know, all these things, none of which is true. To me, all he did this week, uh, a lot of people don't know, on Monday he announced that he wasn't going to spend the money and campaign on in the last 11 rem- remaining primary states in, in any of the beauty contests. Um, <clears throat> but really all he was doing is similar to, you know, four months ago he announced, I'm not going to be spending money or campaigning in Florida because it's a, it's too much resources to expend for a, a relatively low budget campa- campaign to compare to Mitt Romney or, or whoever. So I'm just not, I'm going to move on to Nevada and where where he's now taking his supporters have taken control of the state thanks to people like Blake the eccentric over there. Very good um, work so, from Blake so he, by the way. Very good yeah, work. So what he's doing is really just announcing how he's spending the money right before a big money bomb, which was on Thursday, and he made. The goal of six hundred fifty thousand. He made that goal easily. He, he pretty much does that every time because his supporters are always willing to chip in for the cause. Little tangent, but um, the point being, and the, the big <laughs> debate right now is there's some in the Paul campaign, and I don't know. I, I mean, there's again here. It's, here's the conspiracy theories. I mean, a lot of people dun, think dun, out dun. there maybe his campaign manager Jesse Benton has a, an ulterior motive. He's you know he's only he's just started a few companies. He he wants to maybe get in good with the Romney crowd. Uh, you know, maybe he wants to make a deal and cozy up or whatever. Uh, people are saying that about John Tate as well. Um, works in the campaign. Doug Weed. He actually used to work for George Bush. Somehow, you know, decided to see the light and became one of Ron Paul's advisors. And I actually, I, I think all of those men are 
legit and some of them may also have ulterior motives i mean it's, and there's nothing wrong with that there's it's, there's nothing illogical about jesse betton wanting to continue his career that that makes perfect sense he's th around 30 years old i mean you would want to build build a reputation at the same time and i don't know if any of this is true they might be they might not even be thinking any of this stuff because like i said this is all just internet kind of ron paul chatter what's going on here what's going on here but and the point being, the debate is: is should he should he go little, to Miami? A, li a little tangential, to, he, but yeah, should he go to Miami or should he go to Miami? And in this case, it's Tampa. But should he go to Miami? And Miami, <laughs> Tampa. Here is, I like this Tampa versus Miami. Yeah, We're getting real close to a sound analogy here. <laughs> Miami is Mitt Romney. It's going into the Mitt Romney camp, joining the team, the winning Romney, quote unquote winning team. Romney, Romney, yeah. come on, come on, just do it, for Mark. What they're calling just even, do it, Mark. And even Jesse Benton has said this, influencing the platform. Uh, and you know this all might be part of Ron Paul's strategy. Obviously, Ron Paul ultimately runs his campaign, so right, if he's right. if he's employed these people, I'm still going to give them full faith. And and, and that I, I owe someone who's been consistent for 40 years defending principles I believe in that little bit of of slack, you know, over some internet conspiracies. But let's just say, you know, maybe that's the case. Maybe some people are pushing him to just make a deal with the Romney campaign and quote unquote push his delegates to accept Romney. And uh, make and, and in return for Romney making a few concessions on internet freedom, indefinite pension, things like that. Uh, I don't know. The, I've looked at the Republican campaign mm -hmm. platform before. It says something about the Constitution. I don't remember that thing stopping stopping George Bush from trampling all over it. So, so the Constitution, the um, the platform of the GOP is irrelevant. It's not uh, binding anything. It's just something that sits there on on a piece of paper, and then the president does whatever they want, which is usually against the Constitution. So clearly that's influencing the platform is of no real interest, you know, to anyone, I think. Uh, influencing minds and ideas certainly is. Uh, getting Ron Paul the nomination certainly is. But that's kind of the point here. People talk about what's Ron Paul going to do with his delegates. And even if people in the Paul campaign want to, quote unquote, do something with the delegates, and this is something I just feel personally Ron Paul believes. This is me saying this. I have no idea what Ron Paul really believes. But I think Ron Paul knows damn well that his delegates are not his delegates. They are freedom and liberty delegates. Yeah, and, this and movement is going way... To go to Miami. They're going to stay in Cleveland, and Cleveland is liberty <laughs> in this case. And they're going to go to Tampa. <laughs> Hang on, wait, 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 wait. Let me go back. Let me make sure I follow this analogy. Start it from bringing it back to Cleveland. I go. I tried, tried it all together. But, let, me make yeah. sure, let me make sure I follow you. Pick it up from there. Go. Right, so apparently <laughs> the choice is: Do we want to join Mitt Romney in Miami and join and join the winning team, or do you want to stick to your principles and stay in your okay. hometown of I, Liberty? I, 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 I see, I see a bumper sticker with Dwayne Wade equals Romney, something like that. Yeah, somehow Dwayne Wade became Romney there. Would that confuse millions of people? Probably. <laughs> In fact, it's probably worth doing just for that reason. No, I, th I think we need to try that. I, by the way, e Dwayne Wade equals Romney. Find out why. Come to LinesOfLiberty.com and TheNewAmericanMedia.com. Drive, dr drive from Miami to Tampa on this date. Right. I, look, look, I think we're onto something here. I, I, I think every time you and I chit chat, we come up with three ideas that are million dollar Facebook type ideas. If we get so no millions of dollars yet, but I'm sure we'll get there someday. Yeah, you know, maybe someone like Blake will pick up the torch. If and the run Fred Prince it. enough, we're, we're, that's what we're going to have to pay for, you know, our, our gas to fill my half a tank of gas. So look at we'll Greece. Probably, if probably you, have it. It just might not buy as much. Well, if you look at Greece, you're going to see what Jerry Brown in California is ready to deal with. But I, I <laughs> as you were talking, I got this idea to, I had this quote in my mind. I, I always brought it back to, um, um, who was the World War II general in England? Who am I thinking? I'm thinking of Churchill, I think. Uh, this quote just came to my mind. It is better to die on your feet than to live on your knees. I'm going to say that again. It is better to die on your feet than to live on your knees. And when I typed it in, I found that this was attributed to Emiliano Zapata, Mexican reformer and revolutionary, 1877 to 1919. And, you know, at some point you just got to say, look, I, I, the founders of this country pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. They, they just said, you know what? I, I got to fear not what man is going to do unto me in this, this planet. I, I can't worry about this crap. I know that I stand for something bigger than this, and I know that my God, if there is a God, or my parents, if I know my parents, would stand for the same thing to protect me this way. And and I just really feel like the country is turning to the point where it's like we're begging you not to continue doing this crap. 
at what point have we crossed the line of no return, the line in the sand where we can't come back from it? We've taken the step over, and we're being pushed as absolutely far as we can go. What do you what do you think we're supposed to do here, Mark? Because I mean, we all want to restore the you know the, the Bill of Rights, the the Constitution. Just well, we don't all want to, and that's the problem. <laughs> well, wha- okay, <laughs> most so... people don't even know that problem is a problem yet, and that that's really step one, and that that is that goes back to my solution is that step one of any any solving any problem is make making people aware there is a problem in the first place and i think that is are the biggest obstacle because i think if most people did really understand the problems they would be more concerned and so that and, and it's definitely happening i mean there's a reason that ron paul has all these delegates it's, all these people became concerned to the point that they went to caucuses and went through this whole process to become delegates they didn't feel like you know this wasn't just because they're bored and they are so into sitting for 14 hours in nevada conventions that they just had to go do it this i is love because they realize the seriousness or so they that, say they say something like i love 77 year old dudes they're right. so cool and hip no they, i love 14 that, hours talking politics no i fear for my country yes yes Yes, I'll sign up for that. Basically, the goal is to create more of us as in, in as fast a scale as possible, or at least not everybody needs to start a blog and go on the internet radio and, and just uh, give out ridiculous ideas for an hour and uh, come up with, uh, you know, Dwayne Wade equals Mitt Romney conspiracies and stuff like that. I want, that, I, I want that T-shirt. I want the T-shirt. <laughs> okay? Uh, Make the T-shirt. We can talk about this off air in a minute because, yeah, I, I think you got some, some good thoughts here. Um, but, yeah, you know, not everybody needs to do that. If I can make, like, you know, a lot of people like two percent of that. That that I just need to make them aware, and that and that's really the goal, is to make as many people aware as possible. Because ultimately, you know, you're not going to win something with an election and then force something on people. You're not going to win a freedom election and then force freedom on people. It's going to be the opposite. <laughs> force be, freedom. I love it. <laughs> you're gonna. People are gonna realize that's what the problem is. They're gonna realize what's there. They're gonna realize what's happening, and they're gonna realize that freedom is the solution. And then you're gonna see more liberty can I mean you're already seeing it Rand Paul you're seeing other Justin Amash you're seeing a lot other liberty candidates that are already in office and this is what the Ron Paul revolution is all about and it's it's already happening and frankly it's unstoppable as far as I'm concerned uh, he said in a speech recently there's nothing that can stop the freedom movement now it's impossible uh, no army and no government and I think he's right and it, it's going to be all done without firing a gunshot hopefully you know well I think well, you're onto something because this the is the point is to go through the process and to change people's minds not to do it in the way they do it which is through violence well and, and, I, we, and I'm concerned because I've been studying the revolutionary war for a couple of years now and they petitioned and they begged the king of England to listen for five or ten years prior to the revolution <laughs> they said you cannot keep doing this to us you cannot keep pushing us and poking us with sticks you cannot do this and they didn't listen and we've been we've been yelling P- the Democrats yelled under George Bush from 2001 <laughs> Until 2008, they disappeared about the NDAA, and now we're yelling on the backside saying, "You guys have got to defend our liberties." And I, I'm just concerned. I'm very concerned for the future of my country, Mark. I I, I want this to end peaceful, but I'm not so sure. I, I I want the same thing you want. Where do we go from here? We're we're right at about the end of the show, so you can take it and kind of wrap it up as you feel free in the next minute or so. Where do we go? We go to lionsofliberty.com. Atta first boy. of all. <laughs> Nicely done. Go to new, newamericanmedia.com. I like that. And cheap plugs. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter li- at, at, at Lions of Liberty. Straight up and simple. But no, in general, uh, I mean, I don't know who is listening. I don't know what the beliefs of everyone listening to, uh, to you right now are. I imagine they're not all on the exact same page as I am or you are. And nobody should be on the exact pa- same page because then there's no conversation to be had. But I encourage people to look into things. And that's really the point because anybody that looks deeply enough and digs deeply enough is going to end up coming to some similar conclusions at least. It'll just turn off the TV for a week and just... Dig into some things. Dig into some articles. Dig into the internet. Look up the Federal Reserve. Look up NDAA. Look up CISPA. See what they're trying to do to stop internet freedom. Just check them out. You know, you, I'm not gonna convince you to think a certain way by telling you. You're gonna figure out what you want to figure out. But I just ask people to research the issues. Very nice, Mark. We've been talking with Mark Clear with Lions of Liberty. Thank you again for joining us, Mark. Thank Un- you. Until next time, we'll, we will do this again. Uh, we want to thank everybody for joining the show, Blake. Thank you so much, the eccentric. You uh, it, 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 look. I'm saying this, and I don't. I don't want you to think I'm just blowing smoke. <clears throat> I appreciate you. I appreciate the fact that you became the new 
American media. You grabbed a cell phone when you smelled a rat and you took a video of the rat and you put it up there and how many tens of thousands of people have seen it now? That's why we had to talk with you. Because people don't believe that that's actually happening. It is happening. It's been happening. And if we don't stand up and defend a little bit of freedom, nothing's going to be left. There are people that want you to struggle. They want to steal from you. They want to ruin your life so that theirs can be a little nicer. I do not support some of the core components of both the Occupy movement and the Tea Party movement. There's a little truth in there for both of them. But I'm telling you, you need to protect people's abilities to have a chance, an equal opportunity to succeed or fail. That doesn't mean you're going to have equal results. You might fail miserably, and I have, and I'll do it again. And that's the beauty of America. And that's why we broadcast here from the newamericamedia.com every single week. My name's Brian Engelman. I want to thank Blake for being the New America Media. I want to thank Mark Claire for joining us. I want to thank Jackie, that sports babe, Taylor, for joining us. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure. We look forward to Friday nights with you every single, every single week. It's the highlight of what we're getting into. So thank you for joining us. I'm Brian. We'll see you next week. Join us on YouTube, youtube.com slash the new American media. Take care.